views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to the Mindset Makeover. During this unique show, hosts Lisa Berry and Michelle Carter accompany you on a journey of mindful thinking, true feeling, and clearing mind chatter, all to align you with deep answers and multiple possibilities that help you move forward and live in the now. You become present, clear, and unstuck, and able to live fully led by your heart. Michelle and Lisa invite you to listen and feel this transformation through vibration of word, sound, and song. Open up to what's possible and experience a shift. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Mindset Makeover, What's Possible, the show that shifts. I'm Lisa Berry. And I'm Michelle Carter. Oh, Michelle, I threw you on the good morning, good afternoon, didn't I? <laughs> Pardon me? Oh, the I, I, I finally put that, I was like, oh, it's not this afternoon for everybody. It's your good morning. <laughs> it is good morning. It's very morning here. Is it sunny and How bright? Are you? I'm great. It's sunny and bright. <laughs> it's very sunny and bright. <laughs> This is going to be a rather interesting show, and the reason why I actually think it's neat that I said good morning and good afternoon, because I've never said that before, didn't even think of it, because this show today, today of all shows, it's about evidence that proves something that we believe, and mm. I'm thinking how we, everybody, everybody, there's not one person on this show listening, or even that will listen to the replays, there's not one person on the show that doesn't have these two things in common, are you ready? Mm-hmm. that A, they woke up. We all wake up. If you're listening to this, you've woken up. You wake up, and then the second thing we all do is that we decide what's real right then. We open our eyes. We say, hello, world. This is my life. And mm-hmm. no matter if it really is is real or not, we decide. So I think that's it. This is going to be the fun thing to talk about the whole show because it's all about that. Wake, what are you waking? What is your life? What is the life that you wake up to every day? How do you know that's your life? Are you trying to keep proving and looking for evidence that makes that your life? Or, you know, mm-hmm. or, or do we realize that we have the power to actually change it when we start looking for new evidence? It's so true, though. I think the evidence. And you started this all. <laughs> well, it's because, you know, when you have that idea of you're like, oh, I'm just having a bad day. And then all of a sudden everything confirms that for you. It's just confirming, okay, you want, you're having a bad day. We'll let you know how you're having a bad day. And then all that's <laughs> confirming. And the same the same idea is when you're having a good day and you're like, oh, look at this. This is all these things. And, like, we always have – because both those things exist. Uh, the positive and seemingly negative exist in, in all the time, but it's what we choose to focus on and what we choose to allow in, you know, like what is our – I. Like, it makes sense. Like, that you see you, the evidence. The evidence will you show choose you. The evidence. If you have any con- – yeah, if you have any conviction of any kind about anything, you're, you're going to find a way. It's like when you think something's a conspiracy, and then you go looking into it, and you're like, oh, there's so much, even though I totally believe there's a lot of conspiracies that are true. But you go into it, and you start to find stuff. And if you pretty much want – if you have decided that you want to something to be true, you will find reasons for that to be true. Like – it's funny because I, I don't to know see the it actual, and feel it. Right, and I don't actually know the true, true definition of conspiracy, but really, um, a conspiracy, I think, when I think of the word conspiracy, is that when, when another person, not yourself, but another person really wants other people to believe something and follow it so that they either, A, can gain mm-hmm. power or have the outcome that they desire. So I'm kind of making that definition up. But that's actually, in, in essence, what we all do. And I was, it's funny because I was actually, when you're saying conspiracy, I was going to say it's because we all have a theory of what the outcome is already. I love that you said that really, truly, all positive 
positive and negative, let's say good and bad, whatever you want to be, um, exist at all times. And I was watching a really cool show just last week, a couple, I think it was five nights ago or something, on quantum physics, quantum biology, actually, and they use the best analogy ever. I can't remember if I told you this or not, but it's really cool. If you take a coin, and you know how people always say, okay, choose, heads or tails, and then they throw up in the air, and, but there's a way of doing this. Like, the coin doesn't, nobody knows. There's no actual answer or truth what that will be. So whether you, you spin a coin or you flip a coin at the very moment before it has landed, before it's been measured, before it's been decided, it is both. It has the potential, the 100% mm-hmm. potential of being either. And I thought that was so neat that you said that's exactly like if everybody can remember, you're not really, well, you kind of are flipping the coin when you wake up and you decide, but you, you really are. You really are going to say, okay, wow. what evidence are you going to show me today, Miss, Miss, Mr. or Mrs. World? <laughs> you know? Well, it's just like if you wake up and you're all freaking out about stuff, which has totally happened to me a billion times, and I'm waking up and I'm like, all, oh, oh. What am I going to do with my life or whatever? And I'm sure many of us have woken up like that one time or another. You really <laughs> yeah. are kind of setting your day. Not to say you can't, not to say exactly. And not to say you can't change your day, but sitting there worrying is not going to really, I don't know, it's not going to do too much. It's not really good. But, and, and I can be very guilty of that. And I actually, I think that's even why I do all the work that I do do because I know myself and I know I can be a super worry wart no matter what I believe. And so like, I actually was saying this last night to a bunch of friends. I was like, I can't imagine not having tools or faith or whatever you want to call it because I don't know if I could function in this planet without that. Yeah. So, I, ran through, I ran through a little play story in my mind about, because I like to imagine from step one to step two, oh, so this is my, plan, my planning that I like. So I was thinking, okay, let's say I woke up one morning, and I have, oh, I love to say this term, the monkey mind. Michelle, so I love when you say that, because you know exactly what that means. So you wake up and you have your monkey mind. So what if that was the, you know, everybody wakes up and they and they think, oh, I have a sore throat or, oh, there's something, I don't know, wrong with my eye or something. And they think, oh, I'll go to the doctors or get that checked out. I need to have some tests done to prove it, like get these evidence. And then you have a theory first, like, oh, maybe I have a cold. Oh, maybe I have this. Or, you know, all these kind of intro, there's like actual steps that you take. What if we were to do that? And I, I think that would be fun to kind of go through some steps. But we wake up and we think, okay, A. As opposed to saying, oh, I have something in my eye or I have a cold or something like that, that the test is, you know what, my, my, my symptom is that I don't feel right. I don't feel good. There's an outcome that's happening right now that is wrong, but who, who's, who's in charge? Who created this problem? Like that's the test that you kind of want to do. And if we can, it, through that walking of the, the conversation, and I'm sure we both have some stories we can share about when we do, when we have walked through the conversation in our mind, that as long as we can take not... Oh, like we don't, we're not bad people. We might make decisions that will lead us to an outcome we didn't want, but that's just like in the testing of something. And then you can, you can kind of like a protocol, like a doctor would give you like a prescription or something to say, this is the remedy for it. And that's what you're saying is uh, the tools and the tools are so necessary. And that's why it's kind of, you, you walk through and just say, you know what, I'm part of this. We love to say that we're the common denominator, but there's something I've always done or I'm getting this result for the same reason, I need to change something. And if you can get yourself in that more positive headspace, you actually still have the power. And I think that helps with the monkey mind a little bit or to Mm -hmm. scooch it along, say, here's an outcome, please. (laughs) And sometimes, like, just like you said, like, I find for myself action steps, and not like fear action steps, but just Mm -hmm. doing something active, not necessarily active physical, even though that helps too, but anything to redirect, and we've talked about this a lot, but anything to redirect where your brain's going. Because obviously if you're having monkey mind and say, as I completely know very well, laying in bed before I wake up and just like, and then it just goes crazy. And that doesn't really, that is, that's not even finding a solution of any kind. That's not helping, but getting up and going to do something like, and like what you said, maybe it's a list, maybe it's doing that, but just getting out of that, like shift it, you know, put a wrench in the spoke and it will stop spinning. 
And speaking of when you say about the, the monkey mind, and I think to, I, I want to identify what monkey mind is. The monkey mind is when it's being all silly and hanging off of all kinds of ideas in that brain there that aren't going to really support you, so you got to keep moving. <laughs> but, and mm. what I think is that um, I love, I was thinking about fear versus doubt. And I kind of was like, hey, you know what? Doubt actually serves a purpose. Because doubt sometimes, they say somebody else said something like, the economy's crashing. There's no money anywhere. You know what? Doubt in that would be kind of helpful because you don't want to keep following things. But sometimes you have to look at mm. your own self and say, I need to, is, because, sorry, you don't want to get um, attached to what you're doubting. Like, oh, I doubt that I can do this. But maybe you go, hey, you know what? I doubt that I can do it. But why? Why do I doubt that I can? What, if I, what, mm. what do I need that I can? Or it helps you find a new path. So we shouldn't, monkey mind can sometimes, if you go, there you are again, and this is monkey mind. <laughs> and you say, where, what am I doubting? What am I looking out of right now? Because that means I just want to look for that. Well, what we call always a shift, right? We're looking for that tiny tweak, mm. tiny degree of shifting around. <laughs> now I'm imagining a monkey swinging out of my brain right now. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're also acknowledging it, and that's that's a positive thing because all aspects, like anything that we're going through, mm-hmm. is part of us. And when you admit, like it's just to shoo it away, like what you said about the lumpy carpet, like you just keep putting things <laughs> under the carpet. If you shoo it away, that's not necessarily a good thing either. But if you actually address it, and then you're able to move on, it's like talking to a child. You know, you don't want to just like yeah. ignore a kid. They'll keep going. Hey, 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 hey. But when you talk to them <laughs> and listen to them. <laughs> they so do. I actually want to talk a little bit about that, that lumpy carpet when we come back. That's fun. You just made me think something funny. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. No, I don't have time for coaching. When I get into the car, I just want to hear music and drown out my problems. I don't want to talk about it. What? I've never heard of coaching music before. What do you mean coachable moments set to music? Really? In less than eight minutes, I can listen to a single track and shift my entire mindset and mood? I guess when music is set to the universal frequency of 432 hertz, anything is possible. If you're stuck, stagnant, or need a shift, get your album 8 now at 432shift.com. Join me, Maggie Chula, on Mondays at noon Eastern for Mastermind with Maggie. Let's work together in a mastermind. We can resolve life's problems and create goals for the future. Build action steps empowering you to create your life in partnership with your divine source of light, your soul. Manifesting your goals can be simple and easy, so come with your problems and leave with a plan. The Akashic Master Teachers and I are waiting to help you. Welcome back to The Cat Show. Up next, we have Nico. Nico is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right. A group known especially for their sunspot sleeping, ball chasing, leg rubbing, and of course, companionship. Just look how she struts. It's like she owns the place. And see how she curls up and cuddles her person. The pitch on her purring is simply perfect. Nice one. Fantastic cat. But really the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Nico is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. I love the guitar music. Da, da, da. <laughs> okay, I have. Okay, you brought up the lumpy carpet, which is awesome because there's a line that I, I was thinking about, and I thought, hmm, 
If the evidence doesn't serve me, it's worth further investigation. And I thought about how, because evidence can, like you said, be positive or negative. And so if I really took that, that sentence, like, if the, ev- if the evidence does not serve me, it's worth further investigation. Well, the whole lumpy tarp syndrome, <laughs> is what I called, happened a, again another lifetime ago. And I was in a relationship. I was dating this fellow. And I did not have the tools to to deal with any kind of issue that came up. So we had we had a lot of issues. And I just... We just ignored them. We didn't talk about it. We didn't deal with it. We just kind of said, oh, I'm sorry. Do you want to just move on? We'll just forget about that. We'll pretend it didn't happen or whatever. So under the carpet it went. Under the carpet it went. And then under that carpet it went so many times, there were so many lumps that I kept tripping all the time. This is, of course, metaphorically. And the evidence was saying to me at the time was, I was a really bad partner, bad girlfriend, bad this. And I thought, wow, that evidence doesn't really serve me if I'm just walking around every time thinking I'm this horrible girlfriend and I can't fix things and I'm mean or something. So I, I needed to, I needed different tools. The evidence, instead of saying I was a bad girlfriend, the evidence said that I needed tools. And mm. whether, you know, that I was, I was having monkey mind about being a bad, you know, bad relationship person. And then you can create these even more stories and more stories because guess what? Evidence keeps showing up. And that's why I'm so glad that you brought it because if we can all look at our lives and say, what are the lumps under your carpet? What are you tripping on all the time? And how can we switch? Like mm-hmm. what tools would help you not trip? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I mean, it's, it makes so much you were to sense. Say about though, your the, lumpy, you, if you were to think about your lumpy carpet, <laughs> Michelle's lumpy carpet, um, mm-hmm. and the, the trips and everything, what are, where where would you start? So you know, you know, you need tools, but you don't know what tools you need, and you don't know even what tools exist out there. What would be? What would you do for the first thing? Like, where would you go? Hey, you need a tool. I think mainly because I the thing that works the best for me, and my monkey mind's often not. Well, I guess for many of us, it's not physical things. Um, I I really always go back to the whole phono phono. That for me is the one because it's easy and I can say it and I'll be like, if I'm laying there and I'm worried about whatever, I can say it at at that same moment and Mm. redirect. Um, And also doing, I mean, I've noticed a significant, significant difference in my wacky brain from doing all the music that we've done together because, you know, it gets me in that space and I listen to it constantly. So (laughs) <laughs> because when I'm working on it, you know, you listen to it all the time, and that's really helped. And um, I think for me, it almost has to be something that gets me out of, like, it can't be more thinking. Like, you can't think yourself out of not thinking. Right. And I think that's what's great about music, and that's what's great. What I do like about the prayer, uh, I mean, the Ho'oponopono, is that, you know, all of a sudden you're saying these four lines. And um, for anyone that doesn't know, if you haven't listened to our show before, it's just four really simple lines. So it's just like, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. And you just say it over and over again, or however you want to say it. And it's just, it's really simple and it really helps me. And I think because it's like, because I have to either say or hear something, it just, mm-hmm. like with music, it just gets me out of it because any, if I have to think or if I had to read, it would it just be, I'd still have time to go nuts in my brain. So that's what works for me. And, you know, everybody's different. So it could be a physical thing. So maybe someone goes for it. That's why people run because, you know, you get your mind clear. I mean, physical yeah, I stuff helps love- too, but I'm thinking right in the moment, that's what helps me if I want to switch it I right then. You just do the lines over and over. You actually do it more like a, of a mantra, like just continuously and, and repeating yeah. and cycling. And, I, you know, what sometimes I, I I know you do that, and I never, ever thought about it, that I always do it and fill in the blanks, fill in the blanks. And I think that's actually me. I'm going to try it now your way because I always feel like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry for what? Please forgive me for what? I need, I need an answer. <laughs> no, I, I don't think it – but I really don't think it matters. It's not about what you're right. sorry for. It's not about what – it really isn't mm-hmm. about that. It's because for me, I could do it about anything. Like I'm feeling anxiety. I just start to say those lines. I am like anything. And I don't know even, I'm not directing it. I, I've done it since I was right. a kid because, or a teenager because my mom was telling me about it. The magical Willie Carter, who we talk about every single show. Uh, she was, <laughs> and you know, she's introduced a ton of tools to me. And like, as I've mentioned many times before, 
you love it tapping I can't stand tapping and it's not that I, but I do think it works that's the funny part is like I'm not opposed <laughs> to tapping because I do know it works but I think I have a very immature still thinking I'm a teenager view about it because my mom and very rightfully so if I was being a maniac which you know I could totally be as a teenager especially and she'd be like well you know use your tools I'm like hey use your tools and then now I'm just like uh she was incredibly awesome and so ahead of her time <laughs> but it's just really true it's like you use your tools and you know out of a toolbox you have a lot of things and it's great to have a lot of things. You just have to choose what works for you. If you're like, okay, well, this is a screwdriver. I'm going to grab my screwdriver to use that. And then sometimes you need a hammer. So I think it's the same. Yeah. Oh, I love the hammer. And we all have different That's tools. That's that tools. paradigm. Yeah. And we all have different okay. tools. Like every, if something's going to work for in my toolbox will look very different from your toolbox, but yeah. just find stuff that works for you. And it could and be cards. Like, when, I mean, both you and I love doing cards. Yes. And when evidence keeps showing up that, like, the, the I kind of titled or gave that line to the show about um, when evidence shows up that your life sucks. You're like, okay, that is not a serving thing. So if you're constantly mm -hmm. getting, um, so you really, really want to open up to receiving evidence, seeing evidence, identifying evidence, and, and really saying, I'm asking the universe to help you, like you're in control, and said, but really say, you know, I need a little bit of help here. Can you, can we, can we help shift this so that I can see a little bit that's putting me in the right way, that's that's going to serve me, that's serve my highest self, and and even, I mean, we've all been in different situations or tricky with other people, even it's like not just us, it's other people, and. Um, I, I came up with these, and I know that we, it's really hard to think your way out of what you've thought yourself into. Um, for me, mm. I'd actually, I kind of need to do that because I do need to think it out of it, but I need to have my heart involved. If my heart is not involved in my thinking, I'm, I'm going to, I'm actually sabotaging myself. My heart always, so mm. if I know that I have thought my way into a problem, I know that my heart wasn't involved. And I know that it's basically, I was feeling threatened. Something is, is threatening me. And my mind is allowing that threat to just stay in my mind and not partner up with my heart and my soul and my, my universal energy because we're not alone. And I think that's the thing is when we do get really scared and that monkey mind's kicking in and we're having evidence show up all the time that we failed, that we've done something horrible and this outcome is not the way that it was supposed to be, we really take it personally and our ego, our ego sneaks in. And so if, if I could suggest that um, make sure that your heart is involved in, and that's why Ho'oponopono, you're right, is so such probably a perfect tool if there's such thing um a really helpful and easy and accessible tool some of the things that i do um i first have to agree and say you know what totally not my desired outcome whatever this has happened um i had an incident on the weekend and i was like wow that was not the desired outcome i was really you know feeling my mind couldn't stop thinking about it and then i thought well this didn't go in my favor I have to agree because you want to put yourself in the positive as opposed to denying something like, oh, I can't believe that happened and that's a horrible thing or blame this and blame that. But if I can take ownership and go, wow, I really thought that was going to go differently and it didn't. And it's different. Um, it's not, I don't, I'm not a horrible person. Nobody else is a horrible person. And then I kind of question and go, but should I let this thing, this outcome that I didn't want? Maybe I lost my wallet. Maybe I, you know, missed, um, a Christmas party that was supposed to be on a Saturday and I thought I was on a Friday. You know what I mean? Like all these different things that we, if we could just look at it and say, you know what, because I messed up or because things didn't go my way, I'm not going to become that. That is not my identity. So if we can add our heart back in and replace it, like cause that, that ego kind of sneaks in and then we mm. kind of remove the blame and remove the hurt that we're feeling and that threat. And then as we say all the time, it's like you really can't make a decision when you're stressed or when you're, Scared. I mean, you can get, you can make a decision where you're scared, but it might not be the right one. It's like when the cats run the mm -hmm. wrong way, like ah, I got scared, and then they run to the wall or something. <laughs> nice thing, not that they hurt themselves, but just like this the flies off oh, the wall. Okay. <laughs> We're thinking. I know. I pictured a cat doing that, but um, I wasn't. One of the really interesting things. Um, this is. Well, I'm going to share a personal thing that happened. Oh, I want to make sure. What time is it? Okay, I can say it really quickly. Another lifetime ago, I was going through some serious health issues, and I did. I went to the doctors, and I really 
really thought it was in my head. Like I really thought I was making it up. And so I, of course I went to the testing and I was waiting in the room and the results came in. And when they actually said that there was something, I, I was in a little bit of shock. I was like, what? No, there's not. Wait, no, I was in control of this. There's nothing wrong. And so then I accepted this, you know, protocol that I didn't really think about because I was, you know, just, I was just so in, in shock. But then I finally decided that I wanted, I wanted to be in control. And our minds are so powerful that whether it's perhaps medical, financial, relationship, all these things, I coming back to, that if you think you, if you are receiving evidence that it is not the outcome that you want and is not serving you, we really do have to say, what tools do I need? And if I don't know the tools, maybe somebody in my vicinity that I can reach out to might know of a tool that will help. And even by saying that, just out loud, the universe usually puts something in your path. Like your mom's book, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. Best book ever. <laughs> even the fine signals and clues. I mean, hey, that's all about evidence. I love that book. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It is all about evidence because, you know, you're walking through. I love that stuff like that, though. Like when you're having, you know, cause some days are, I mean, I don't really know about a non-remarkable day. Most of my days are ridiculous. But <laughs> something will happen. And then when when you have a connection with someone and then you're like, and then this, like, I get so excited. Lisa and I do this all the time that we'll leave messages for each other about some Somebody may not even notice this, like they would not even notice this tiny little interaction with another person or something. But like when you get so excited too, because the the opposite of, you know, the chatter and, you know, all the negative things manifesting, it's kind of the same with pot when you're having all those positive things, like when you have those, and sometimes it's really, really little stuff. Like the other day, um, I can't remember where I was. Oh. Oh, there's. There's the Wait, let's tell oh, that's going to be a good story. No, it's already. We're all suspense. <laughs> Positive, happy story. I'm on returning. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Every Tuesday on Living with Moxie, join Shefali Burns and Donna Martuz in conversations designed to take you to the next level, where we highlight ideas, resources, and strategies that provide you with the leverage you require to meet and exceed your business and personal goals. Each week on Living with Moxie, we will lead conversations related to success, achievement, fulfillment, and extraordinary, vibrant living. Are you ready to live with Moxie? Join us. This is the sound of salmonella gyrating on your undercooked chicken. And it looks like mom might be taking it out a little early. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. So use a thermometer to cook each type of meat to the right temperature. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. All right. Do you remember your story? Oh, well, yeah, it was just really, it was a funny day. I mean, it was a good day, but I had went to acupuncture and I was super happy. And that, cause I love going to acupuncture and I love my friend in acupuncture. It's Chandra um, Schofield, who's the greatest acupuncturist if you're in LA. Anyway, always doing a plug, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, I was, I was really, I was, feeling great it was good and I had actually that morning I had woken up with quite a monkey mind and I was like okay well it's good because I already have this appointment so I went to acupuncture and I felt great and then I went to I can't remember what exactly it was but somehow this guy needed my needed my um 
birthday. And then we found out that we had the same birthday. And it was so funny because we were smiling so much. It was like at a cash register and we were smiling at each other. So like we were so happy that we had each other's birthday, like how weird that was. And then he's like, we should hang out on our birthdays. And it was just very, very cute. And so <laughs> for some reason that made like, that just set my day. And I was so happy that I met this guy that had the same birthday as me. And then after that, um, Another friend was like, hey, I'm at this crystal shop and then, or like a candle crystal place that I, they, oddly enough, is four blocks away from my house. It's been there for years and I didn't know it was there. And then I go there and I had been thinking, I was like, oh, I really want spicy soup. And then she's like, hey, me and my friend are going to ramen. You want to come? I'm like, absolutely. And then I needed, I had this broken bracelet in my purse that I needed to take to get fixed. It was right beside the ramen place. And I was like, Everything is so great today. And it was none of it was, those were not big things, but they just, they were all the little like and clues and things that were just, it just really flowed. And it was really, uh, so sometimes I can just see stuff like that. It's just, it's like, yeah, of course we want those big days that, you know, you're signing the big contracts and it's a big glorious day, but a lot of life isn't like that. You know, there is moments like that, but a lot of life is the little things and to still find like that day could have went one way because I really, I, I mean, that morning I was doing the laying in bed, wheels turning, all that stuff. And then it totally changed and it was really small, tangible things. Like none of those things were really that big, but they were huge at the same time. And I love and, that it evolved. Uh, um, and I loved it. Almost every part. Almost every positive, like really neat, glowing thing that came out, you were with somebody on some level, like whether it's the guy you didn't know who had the same birthday. And so you were able to, in, in that small way, celebrate every time. Like you were able to acknowledge it, to highlight it, to say, that was really neat. Did you say, we notice what you notice? Your mom, that's one of her chapters. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really um, what we, it's important to do because at the same time, have you ever noticed that if you wake up with that monkey mind and say so you do go into the office or you do get a coffee or you do this and somebody else has that monkey mind and you both start talking about it and now it becomes almost mm-hmm. gossip because remember, gossip is not proven. And now we don't have evidence. So if you keep talking about it, though, and then you find somebody else, you are given evidence and saying, oh, well, they believe that, too. They believe that this day is horrible. Oh, look at that. And and then you're even manifesting more and more. And then you'll start. But if you start saying, I wanted soup, you want soup. Oh, and you actually kind of make a little bit of a big deal or a happy deal. Like, not a, oh, my gosh, a happy deal. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you you literally can start, you know, making uh, that evidence just is what you just said. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that it keeps it just flows. And then something, yeah, you might have snuck in and went, maybe it was a, a negative thing that showed up, but because you're on that roll of positive or on that roll of goodness, that it kind of like eliminates it or dissipates it. It just kind of doesn't make it so big. Yeah, and it, 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 it doesn't make it so big, exactly. And like, I've always loved, I can't remember where I heard it from, but it was years and years ago, the acronym for FEAR like well, mm-hmm. fear would be the acronym uh false evidence appearing false. real yeah and so mm-hmm. false evidence appearing real because it i just i really love that because you're like okay is it, okay and we have addressed this sometimes we really are in it it is you know a car's driving in the other in your lane and you could crash and die like that there's some real stuff the fear exists for a good mm-hmm. reason but unfortunately we're not really using, especially in our very, very taxed and busy, not taxed physically, but I mean, just taxed emotionally, um, busy mm-hmm. world. We, and we have a lot of pressure and a lot of like, you know, shoulds and we're constantly advertised of what our life is supposed to look like. And if your life is not like that, then what's wrong with you? And that starts, that's more and more and more, you know, and I fear itself is not a bad thing. It's just not meant to be, it's not supposed to be, a daily occurrence your norm. all the time like yeah because then you know everything gets shot like you're so used to living in with anxiety which I would I mean I can say a lot of people feel this right now like it's just it's we are in a very we're in a time of so much information I was actually watching a comedian last night it was really f- actually it was it was a, a special you were watching and a it comedian? was Dana Carv- oh, Canadian show. A comedian yeah no a comedian, a, comedian. a funny person <laughs> not a Canadian I was staring at a Canadian last night funny enough though I was with a couple Canadians last night so that I was 
watching a Canadian as well, and myself. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, I was watching this comedian, and they were talking about how uh, they were talking about the the information, like we're we're set up to be so anxious right because we have so much news, we have so, and it's readily available all the time and in the past it's not things would be more selective so it is kind of good that we know everything that's going on that's great well technically we know everything that's going on that is there's good aspects to that but then there's also i mean your world is what you focus on so if you choose to focus that everything's you know gone to hell and it's all terrible right now you're going to keep seeing all that but if you chose choose to be like wow there's you know, there's been quite a bit of progress in the world, and we're because there's both, and I don't think you have to be blind to the other side. Like if you're, you you can see all of that's it. That's what I was mentioning. That really, doubt, where you're, yeah. The doubt, yeah. The doubt does play. But well. you can see, yeah. I was thinking about, um, well, as I said in the very beginning of the show, there's something we all have in common here is that we wake up every day. I mean, you're, if you wake up, you've got to get through the day, and, and you're going to wake up again tomorrow and get through that day. So I was thinking of what word that would be, and, of course, I thought of, you know, persevere, perseverance. And, of course, I had to look up proper definition, and it really mentions that perseverance or to persevere something is to, to go through something without having any evidence of a prospect or of the outcome you desire. Regardless, like you just go, and this is where the heart comes in. And we actually, it's funny because after the uh, break, we are going to play a perfect song for that. But I think that's what, if you could, if anybody can start off by saying, I have evidence that it's not the outcome I want. And then they can say, um, see the monkey mind is saying, and I don't have any evidence that it will go the way I want it. However, if you're willing to hang in there, and just have that perseverance that with even even without the evidence that you need at, that just to believe and keep going and truly just keep asking do your hoponoponos do your just honest to gosh like goodness and belief that it will and persevere and that that really does come from the heart that really does come from the heart and, mm-hmm. and joining and knowing that there's other people like when i just love picturing you being so happy with other people because it means you're connecting and, and, and then your guys are spreading it because your energy is bouncing around <laughs> it just kind of grows <laughs> it's so true though like I I love when you have those moments with other people I mean it happens to me all the time I basically talk to everybody so it's uh but when you just like connect with a person even if it's for a minute it's just like everybody wants to I know and just to be connected I think to a degree like and everybody has a story too like you I should say I think that's truly why we have to talk about cats. But I think that cats are so are animals, dogs, guinea pigs, rabbits, all those kind of um, quote unquote family member pets that we have is that they they actually can't say negative things to you. They can't say, "Wow, did you ever screw your life up?" You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and they they only ever just sit with you and and ag- they acknowledge living. They're just like, "Hey." We're living. We're happy. You want to find a little a toy that's not even a toy, and we can just play with it. Like it doesn't even matter. They're yeah, so and they don't even boxes. care. <laughs> and you buy them toys, and then they just want boxes. They're like, "Oh, cool! There's that's... a box. I love this box." <laughs> and so sometimes when we're dealing with those heavy things, like a lot of people, you know, they're they're in their own world and they're thinking, "A, I'm not enough. B, I don't have enough. C, um." I messed this up and now like even if I think about a friendship or relationship like say you've had a really bad fight with your your friend or something and you think wow this is like the end of this relationship and you're thinking it's a loss right let's so say you're thinking all these things or hmm. oh, yeah, loss of income loss of job loss of position loss of thing oh and speaking of which this is actually a, a neat story to share right now one of my my really dear friends she had been in her career for so long that you know a lot of things get attached to it or woven around it and between it and all around it through her life. And when it was necessary for her to leave that position, leave the career, leave the career completely. Um, she, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a good thing. It was not a happy thing, but meaning it was like, a, I know this is right and I have to leave it. And she was just honestly lost for for a couple of years, actually, after, because she, she no longer knew who she was. The evidence showed mm. her that she was her career. And now she didn't have any evidence of anything. She was such a clean slate, but she didn't have a baseline of, wow, I can go be anything and do anything and have anything. Now it went from, I'm lost. 
and I don't know. I'm not anchored mm-hmm. any longer, and I, and you go through a morning, like literally of, of a morning of something, and I think that's where the monkey mind can really stem from the beginning of so many things, and that's where it comes right back to that love again. Go to your heart. You are just love. You are enough. Like that's where you start always from, no matter what, mm-hmm. no matter what the situation is. Yeah, and it's hard to remember that because we're so. Um we're conditioned to think otherwise. We're conditioned to think what have we, all the markers, you know, of what a successful life is. Like, as you say this, there is a very cute chubby little cat that just walked into the room and (laughs) and and normally it's my other cat that's in here and there's a sunspot and Amy, my cute little cat, Amy is just, rolling and like literally laying on her back and it's just the funniest thing and that really and it's weird because she <laughs> never never comes in here but she's well she and I think she's like hey it's not so bad find a sunspot lay on your back it's all good <laughs> oh find the sunspot that's really like there's they're not looking for a whole sun room. They want to find one bot. And so that's, I think we can use that because it's like, okay, it could be a cloudy day, but there might be one sun spot. And cats always seem to find that. And dogs too. Like it's, they find that one little spot and then they sun you know oh, they, they have, you know what? Oh. They know what they're doing. They really, they just want that feel. I was, it's so funny because I was um, taking advantage of the weekend because our last show we were talking about donating, of course. I am completely addicted to it. I'm going through anything. I, it's, it's funny. I literally going, oh, what's in that corner? What can I give away? What's over there? Do I need it? Can I purge over here, purge over there? And I got really excited because I'm as well, I'm in Canada and, and you're in the U.S. right now. And I found six American dollars. And I was like, wow, that's like 10 Canadian right now. And I felt so excited. Yeah. <laughs> I actually was going to mail it to you for Christmas. But <laughs> 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 oh, commercial. See, oh, the sun spot, the commercial spot. The sun spot. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Aliyah, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, And she's got this little toy she's always playing with. All day long. Tap, 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 tap. Bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg roll showed up. Like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. Lisa, where did you go? Oh, I just had a great thing to say, and I was on mute. <laughs> oh, I was so okay. I'm going to say it again because it was really fun. That was the best commercial break other than me not coming back in. But because both <laughs> I might... commercials, the very first two ones, you're like, hello. First two were about hearts and love and relationships, and then there was a cat. I was like, gosh, this is like the perfect commercial set. <laughs> Well, earlier, it really was. It's so funny because, oh yes, oh yeah. 
I was going to say about shelter pets because right now, because I love that commercial about the like ado- adopting a pet, and I was like looking at Amy who's being adorable, and I was like. She was adopted out of a shelter at a year and a half, and she's so perfect and so cute and amazing. And I, I just want to say something for people to go, go adopt the pet maybe for Christmas. That's a good idea. <laughs> Give them a home for Christmas. Nothing yeah, to do with anything. I have nothing to do with anything, <laughs> but I was thinking of the joy that that cat gives me. And well, both. I think that has to do with everything. It is joy. Because it I thought of that commercial, and I'm like, it's so true. I know. You think, do I have room for more? That's why if you donate enough, you can have room for a cat. <laughs> well, I thought it was really perfect when I was asking you earlier about, well, what do you do, you know, when you are looking for tools and, and those tools? And you mentioned that what if, besides the Hoaponopono, which, of course, is amazing, is um, doing some of the work that we do because we really try to, like, we really try to encapsulate the mind chatter that's going on and then full circle to a resolution and then put music to it because, as we know, music helps with the vibration and it puts, you know, it flows through. And then I thought, well, how perfect was, was that that you brought that up because um, we have a song that you sing so beautifully and it's called For Love. And our whole topic really is moving from monkey mind to, um, finding new evidence that's amazing and I mentioned that I think you really need to start when you come from your heart so we do we're going to share our for love with everybody and it's with the heart chakra bowl and Michelle's lovely voice and I hope everybody can go into their hearts with this song Around, it? Mm. it has this like floaty feeling. I always like, forget where I am when I hear it. <laughs> Which is a good thing to yeah, it really your mind does. Like, you know, yeah, because if mm-hmm. you're stuck, you're like, oh, how get there? And I think the most important thing is to, to not feel helpless. And when you hear something like for love, you know, it's like the heart is just so powerful. It can. It can, it doesn't, you know, I know the heart doesn't leap and go, hey, let me go make some money for you. Or, hey, let me fix that relationship for you. But it kind of does. It just, it puts you in a position where your reality can start shifting. And you can look at evidence in a different way. And sometimes what you might think is a, is a punishment or this really bad thing, if you can shift that perspective, 
so that it doesn't seem like that, that it's maybe a gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, often, you know, and sometimes those biggest challenges, those times where we are going through a great challenge, which is, you know, because there's little tiny challenges and there's some, there's some big stuff that happens as we talk about all the time, but sometimes you go through that big stuff and then when you actually take a step back and look at it, you're like, that was the greatest gift, like that, or that moment, that dark moment inspired this new thing, or out of that came this. And I mean, I often think about that is I have met some of the best people in my life at the worst times, worst quote unquote times. Um, yes. I mean, you, I met you when I was on a call with a terrible attitude. I met Ben when I worked at this restaurant that I was like so upset about having to work there. And I met other really close friends of mine at when I was their server at a place I really was upset about working at again. But it was like, now I look, I was like, they, that all played its role perfectly. And it really wasn't a long time in my life, but it was, I don't know how else I would have met these people. So you just, but even that you had perseverance, even though it's hard, I think that proves that. Yeah, and it, I mean, it can be a lot of things where, I mean, it happens, you hear people, like you read some amazing inspirational book and you find out that they got into this because of, you know, some tragedy or some something that happened yeah. and that ultimately became their life's work. So it is, and sometimes it's like, it's such a new, a new place to be in where you go, oh my gosh. I don't, this is a big challenge. I've never been in this one before. I mean, sometimes because we're so, we talk about repeating patterns, how when it just, oh, it just mm -hmm. keeps happening again. I'm here again. Oh my gosh. But sometimes it's, something happens and it's so new. You're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not comfortable. I really don't know. Oh my gosh. This is a funny quick story before the end of the show. I got to tell this one. I was in kindergarten and kindergarten ended and it was my first you know, experience <laughs> school. And so I came home and I said, all right, summertime. And then I'll go back and we'll see my teacher. And she's like, oh, you have a new teacher. Oh, little Lisa stopped dead on tracks. What? New teacher? New classroom? New chair? New desk? No, 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 no. I was like, new spot on the carpet? No. I was devastated. I refused. I was not going back to school. I was I was in complete fear. I was like, no, the next teacher might not like me. I might not like her. What if I find dumb next year? What if I, you know, all these things. Like, we're just running through my, like, my terrified little brain. And I was really happy that my mom, of course, was, you know, I was definitely going to school next year, <laughs> grade one. But um, it's funny because sometimes there's like new things, but I really still did have that. You know, every, sometimes, sometimes new things can just be as scary as same old repeating patterns. And absolutely, because you, know, you don't I, know. You don't know what you don't know. And to really look for people who um, are tools or situations. And sometimes, and you even mentioned this earlier, it's like we, sometimes it's about meditation. It's about going in, inward. And not thinking, but just feeling, allowing music and sounds to move that around. And I think because we are at Christmas time, and this will be being played, um, replayed throughout the Christmas week, is that that's a really kind of neat time to look around and see the great patterns in your life and the great newness in our lives. Like brings it all together. Mm -hmm. End of the year, and Christmas joy, spirit. And it is and important to... It's and take stock of what, like, if, if you're looking at success, what it, success is more than just um, money and stuff like that. Success could be your relationships and all that stuff. Like, sometimes look around at the things that do work in your life, because when you do have gratitude for what's working, it will make other things work better, too. Because, like, so then I've been thinking about that recently. I was like, I have such good people in my life. Like, I was like, I don't have the the friends that are dramatic and causing me trouble anymore. Like I really, all the people in my life are wonderful. And I was like, that's pretty amazing. And that has not always been the case. And so I think it's, it's good just like to notice things like that because your outer world is a reflection of what's going on inside. And we're all so many aspects, you know, so take what stock a of what thing. is working to stop them. Like, I think you just said an amazing thing I'm going to hold on to forever. I hope everybody else loves it. People, the people in our lives are 
our biggest evidence can be our biggest evidence. Mm. If you've got people in your life who are terrific and make you feel good and really support you and are encouraging you and are helping you, I, I think you're on a good path. And if you've got the people in your life that are exactly. challenging is kind of okay, but, but you don't want to be around them all the time. You can't be on guard and in fear challenged all the time. But the, the people in your lives really, really are those that is are is that evidence that mm-hmm. um, can really highlight what what path your life is is going to take mm-hmm. if you continue that way. Oh, I love it's that you so love true. And like, <laughs> well, it's because I was like, I was just thinking this the other day, and I was like, I was just looking around, and I was like, I only have good people, and if I was to go through my text messages, no one's texting me to say, and everyone's like, oh, that was. I love you. That was so awesome. And like, it's all love fest. We're all loving each other. It's just love. And it's literally <laughs> everybody. Like, I can't believe how many hearts go with little heart emojis in my phone. And I was like, I like no one's texting me with drama or anything. It's always, so that's, it's a good space. Yay. So <laughs> Maybe we'll pass. Over the Christmas time. holidays. <laughs> yeah, everybody looks at the, where the love shows up. Evidence of where love shows up in your life. And we'll see you in the new year. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Yes. Happy 2017 almost. Okay, bye.